Hi guys, it's Bryony. Welcome back to my channel and today I'm doing another highly requested video which is talking about the cost of fertility treatment when becoming a solo mum. This is one of those questions that comes up all the time whenever I do like a QA and a uh, on Instagram or anything and ask you guys what questions about solo motherhood you have for me and people always want me to talk about the cost of it and I've put off doing this video until now because the truth is it's a very tricky video to film just because there is no one answer. Fertility costs can vary widely and a lot of it depends on your own fertility, things like how fertile you are, your age, etc. plus also where you live because there are different options when it comes to fertility in different countries around the world and the cost of fertility care is different everywhere too. So it's impossible for me to give you one solid answer but I can share some of the costs that I encountered on my solo motherhood journey and hopefully that will be helpful to any of you out there considering going on your own journey. Before I get any further into the video however, but I do want to state that I'm not going to be covering known donation in this video. Using a known donor is basically what it kind of sounds like. You use a sperm donor who is somebody that you have met in real life or who you know personally, who you might be friendly with or not so friendly with. It varies completely from person to person. But that is a whole other kettle of fish and has a whole other legal scenarios to think about etc so I'm not covering that in this video. This video is specifically aimed for people intending to use a sperm donor through a sperm bank uh, and potentially even egg donors too, I'll get onto that a little bit further down the line but not for known donation. So I was quite fortunate on my own fertility journey with conceiving my son, it didn't take me that long to get pregnant with Orin, I only had to do two IUIs and all the kind of pre-test things before that so it ended up, I don't know the exact amount but it ended up costing me around £6,000 to conceive him and it might shock you to know but that is actually really cheap when it comes to fertility treatment. When it comes to fertility you could spend as much as £5,000, you could spend as much as £50,000. It varies so wildly depending as I said before where you, li where you live in your own fertility and even when you spend those amounts of money there is no guarantee that you're going to end up with a baby at the end of it. You could spend all this money and then not be able to get pregnant or not end up with a viable pregnancy. That is probably the worst thing about fertility treatment is that it's not a guarantee. What you're really doing is buying a very expensive lottery ticket and just keeping your fingers crossed that it works. But I was one of the lucky ones who did go through fertility treatment and come out with a baby and so in this video I will share all the costs and things that I encountered and some things that you might want to consider yourself if you are thinking of going down this route. So the first thing to say here is there are two main ways to try to get pregnant with fertility treatment when you are a solo parent and that is IUI and IVF. I'm not going to talk about the pros and cons to each of these in this video because to be honest that needs its own video and I will probably get around to doing that at some point. But generally speaking, those are the two options you're going to be going for and they have different costs involved. IUI generally tends to be cheaper, but you might need more attempts for it to work. IVF is more expensive and more invasive, but can give you better results first time around. So it's kind of a, a weighing up which one works for you. Also depends on whether you want siblings and your age, etc, etc. Like I said, we'll do a specific video on that one. But before you even get to the point of trying with IUI or IVF, you first got to go through a number of tests. And I worked out that I think I spent around a thousand pounds before I even got to the point of trying for an IUI just on these various tests that I had to have done first. So the first cost you're going to have when you go on this journey is the initial consultation. This rate will vary depending on which clinic you choose but essentially it's a consultation with one of their consultants and also involves a blood test and a scan usually. The scan is the really important bit, it's an internal ultrasound where they basically take a look at your ovaries and uterus to see if there's any obvious issues that need to be resolved first and also to get a count of how many follicles you have to see what your fertility is roughly and also included in that is the blood test that's going to test something called your AMH, your anti-malarian hormone levels and that gives them an indication of how many eggs you have too. Not necessarily the quality but generally speaking the number of eggs gives an indication of what your success rates might be with fertility treatment. So that was the first expense that I encountered and I remember I had to book the ultrasound first before the consultation and in the consultation they kind of discussed the results from that ultrasound and also my blood test and everything else that was involved in that. And when I spoke to the consultant, they agreed that because of my age and because everything looked good, that IUI was the route for me. And at that point, I then had to choose a sperm donor. And I remember feeling like that was really early on in the journey. It was like, I've just had the initial consultation and now like I need to pick a sperm donor. That just felt really fast somehow. I'm not sure why, but it did. And the sperm was definitely, in my case, the most expensive thing out of all of my treatment. I was very picky about the sperm donor that I wanted. And so I used a sperm bank that I was able to get a lot of information from that I felt very happy with. And I also had to pay for like a pregnancy slot 
and the shipping costs because it wasn't in the UK so that was a lot more so it basically added up I think each individual vial of sperm in total was around £1,200 if not slightly more including shipping depending on how many you ship together because at least the shipping was the same regardless of how many vials you shipped over so that was definitely one of the biggest costs of my whole treatment was the sperm however another cost that I ended up paying which I wasn't quite prepared for I hadn't expected to pay for going into IUI was to have a high cozy scan. A high cozy scan is basically where they put a catheter inside your cervix and they flood dye and a saline solution into your uterus and your fallopian tubes to check that your fallopian tubes are open. With an IUI it's really important they are open because if they're blocked then there's no point in doing it because the egg's just not gonna just the sperm's never gonna be able to get to the egg because the fallopian tube's blocked. So it is quite an important test to do. It's one that my clinic said I had to do, but I think I could have pushed back on that if I really hadn't wanted to and said, actually, I feel like I want to go ahead without doing this test. That being said, however, it was, I think, 400 or 450 pounds for that high cozy scan. And if you think about the cost of the sperm, like 1200 pounds plus the cost of the IUI, which I'll get onto in a minute, you could be spending like thousands of pounds each IUI for something that's not even got a hope in hell of working because you've got a blocked fallopian tube and you wouldn't know unless you'd had that scan done. So it was probably the most uncomfortable thing of the entire process of having a baby was having that scan done. But I don't regret doing it because I'm very pleased that I was able to confirm my fallopian tubes were open and so I knew IUI was a good bet for me. So it is an expense that I would say is worth doing because then if you're going for IUI in particular because then you know you're not wasting your money each month by like having an IUI when there's no chance of it working so like I said didn't really expect it to happen to need that one but glad that I did pay for it. The other expenses I had to pay for was I think about £150 worth of blood tests for my thyroid, um, for taste, testing for HIV, syphilis and lots of other STDs that they are legally required to test for over here and some other things that they tested for too. So there was a number of blood tests that is legally required by any fertility treatment. Any fertility treatment that happens they have to test you for these things um, and so I think that came to about £150. Those tests I could have potentially got done by my GP, but honestly, by the time you're on this road and you, you know you're gonna be spending thousands of pounds trying to get pregnant anyway, 150 pounds felt like nothing to just get the tests done there and just get ready to go. So all in all, the initial consultation, the high cozy scan, the blood test, and in the end, a little bit of medication I had to have for my thyroid, all came up to around the thousand pound mark. Might have been slightly under or slightly over, but around a thousand pounds before I'd even got to the point of trying. And then you get to the point where for me, I started having IUI. Now I went for an unmedicated IUI cycle, which the first one I had was 750 pounds for an unmedicated IUI. After that, they then increased the prices, so it's now £900 for an unmedicated IUI, or at least it was the last time I had one, which was very annoying, but still, that is actually one of the cheapest options out there. So it costs me just over £2,000, basically, each time I tried to get pregnant for the cost of the sperm and the cost of the IUI, which included having scans leading up to it. Um, and a pregnancy blood test at the end and a six week scan as well if you did get pregnant. So it did include quite a few things in the package, but still like for what an IUI is, which is basically like you turn up on the day you ovulate, they stick a catheter in you and they inject this defrosted sperm. It felt like a lot, I'm not gonna lie, it felt like a lot. Now it took me two attempts to get pregnant with IUI, so my first one failed, my second one was successful. However, I had also purchased another vial of sperm just in case my second attempt failed and I had had that shipped over to the clinic while I was still in the two week wait, I think with my second IUI attempt. Um, because I wanted to be able to go ahead straight away in the next cycle if that one failed too. The way that it works in the UK is that they will not, with my clinic at least, they would not start an IUI um, process unless the sperm was literally in the clinic when your period started. By the time you find out that you're not pregnant from one cycle, your period is pretty much either started or is about to start, so there's no time to ship it over after you find out, so I would have had to skip a month. And because I was trying not to do that because my periods were really painful, I wanted to make sure there was sperm here ready to go for the next one. So I ended up obviously paying for an extra vial of sperm, which I didn't actually end up needing, although I have still kept in case I potentially want a sibling in the future, I've still stored it there. But you know, that's a potential expense I didn't necessarily need to have. So it could have been a little bit cheaper if I hadn't done that, but I don't actually regret doing it in the end. So once I'd reached the six, seven week mark and had my scan and they'd confirmed everything was fine, I was discharged from the clinic and put into the NHS where fortunately my pregnancy care was free. So that's pretty much what happened with my fertility treatment. But like I said earlier, it's so dependent 
on your own body because if IUI hadn't worked for me I would have probably had to move on to IVF and in fact I think I decided I was going to do three IUIs and if that didn't work then I would move on to IVF and the cost of IVF is significantly higher than IUI I would have been spending several thousand just for one round of IVF plus of course you then add the cost of the sperm on and then you've got to freeze the embryos if you have any left over to stay to store for later so there's a lot of other costs involved with that side of things now in the UK IVF and IUI are your only real option when it comes to fertility treatment but if you're from the United States and a couple of other European countries I believe but I'm not sure of the exact ones you might have checked this out you do have another option which is called ICI and that stands for intracervical insemination this is basically a form of home insemination that you can do where the sperm bank will send the sperm directly to you and you inseminate yourself at home without needing to go to a doctor's clinic this is probably the most affordable way of using donor sperm from a clinic to get pregnant but it's not legal in the UK. No clinic, um, well, no, sorry, no sperm bank will ship donor sperm to you here. And if you are ordering from overseas, they always ask for your clinic address. They will never send it to your home address. So it's just worth noting that it's not really an option here. I have seen one clinic that potentially offers this option where they will be the clinic that collects the sperm and they will kind of hold the data around um, what sperm was successfully conceived or not. The reason you can't have it shipped to your own home is because there's a, a family limit on how many children can be conceived through using one donor in the UK. So they have to do it through a clinic so the clinic keeps records. Um, so there's one clinic that might do it for the record keeping aspect and then you can do it at home but I've only come across one and I personally would not have gone down that route here. But if you live outside the UK, and particularly in the United States, I know as of the time of this video, this is still legal. You can have sperm banks ship sperm straight to your home. And there are usually cheaper options over there too. Now, in order to do an ICI, you have got to know your body inside out. One of the other benefits of using a clinic is that they will scan you so they can actually check the size of your follicle and see when it's ready to ovulate. If you have no sense when you're ovulating or just doing it from test strips or from taking your temperature, you might not get as an accurate in a result. The other thing that using a clinic can do is that they can actually see when you're about to ovulate and say, give you a drug to basically force you to ovulate in a certain period of time. And so they know they're gonna give you the sperm at the right point. Um, it's called a trigger shot. You can have that again in clinics in the States, but you can't if you're at home with ICI. So unless you know your body really, really well and you know exactly when you ovulate and when the right time to do it is, I would say you probably might end up wasting quite a bit of money just doing ICI. But if you know your body really well and that's the best way for you to get pregnant, that is something worth considering if you're in a country where it's available. Another really important factor to consider when it comes to the cost of fertility treatment is your age. Age has a big impact on fertility. It's impossible to say like when you are or aren't fertile because it's so dependent for different people. I've seen women get pregnant with their own eggs as late as 45 and I've seen women um, basically be near menopause in their early 30s. So there's such a wide variety of what's normal and what will happen to different people. It's impossible for me to tell you when you need to do it. But generally speaking, by the time you reach 40, most women will struggle to get pregnant with their own eggs. It's gonna be quite a trek to do it. And you might end up using what's known as a donor egg, which is somebody else's egg, uh, if your eggs are deemed to no longer be uh, viable for pregnancy. That will also add an additional cost because of the donor egg. And it's also worth noting that there are not as many egg donors as there are sperm donors. So you may have to go on a waiting list for that too. And a lot of people consider at this point going overseas because some treatment is a lot cheaper overseas. IVF can be cheaper, particularly from the UK perspective in places like Denmark and Greece. Um, Cyprus is another popular de destination too, but you do need to look into whether it's going to be viable for you, cost of travel, transport, staying, etc. Uh, and whether or not you want to be away from friends and family to do this. So there's all these different aspects to consider when it comes to the cost of fertility treatment. Again, on the path of like using a donor egg, if that's not viable to you, another option could potentially be using a donor embryo. Some countries that are very popular to use for donor eggs and donor embryos are Spain in particular over here. Um, there's a lot of donor eggs and donor embryos over there that can be used. So then you have to factor in the cost of flights and extra. So basically what I'm saying in this video is it is impossible to tell until you start on this journey. That being said, however, there are two pieces of advice I would give to anybody who is considering going down this road. The first one is get a fertility MOT done. If you're somebody that's currently at the phase of, I'm thinking about this, but I'm not quite sure yet, but I know I want kids and I think this might be the best route for me, but mm, just not quite there. 
this is the first thing I'd recommend you do and I would get it done through a clinic. You can order these online kits where you basically like finger prick and um, put it into a vial of blood, put your blood into a vial and send it off etc. But a fertility clinic is going to be the best bet for you with a fertility MOT because they will also do an internal ultrasound and that internal ultrasound is a critical part of a full assessment of your fertility. It's going to give you a much better idea of what your options are, where your fertility currently is and how long you have to wait or not wait etc. So it's a really good start starting point if you're thinking of having a baby on your own. The second piece of advice I would give is that before you even start on this journey with fertility treatment, I would want to have at least five to ten thousand pounds set aside in savings to go into it because you may end up needing to use all of it, you may end up only need to use part of it, you may end up needing much more than that further down the line but that is a good amount to start with because you can get the ball rolling with tests and stuff and that will also give you enough money to get a few attempts of trying in and see if you're hitting any roadblocks and see if there's anything going on. It's not going to guarantee you that you can get pregnant with that amount but it's a good solid amount I think to have ready to go. So I really hope this was helpful to any of you out there who are currently starting your solo parenthood journeys. Like I said, it's really frustrating in some ways because I just can't give a solid answer for how much it's going to cost you to get pregnant. Everyone's bodies and circumstances are so different. It just isn't possible to give a solid answer and say, this is what you're going to spend because it could be wildly wrong. Definitely one of the most frustrating parts about this journey, I think, is the fact that you have to go into it with so many unknowns. But yeah, I think having a good solid amount of savings behind you before you start is going to put you in a good place for going forward with treatment. And of course, there are all the other variables I talked about briefly in this video that you could go into and honestly I could make like a two hour long video going over all of them there are so many to consider but just sharing my own experience and journey and the things that I encountered and kind of things to think about before you start I hope that was helpful to any of you out there thank you so much for watching guys do please subscribe and I will see you soon bye everyone have a great day